What's up, guys? Another episode of Five Minute Fatherhood coming live from Fort Thomas, not Cincinnati, uh, <laughs> That's right. uh, but both as well. Exactly. Here, here in the same room, me and Jeremy. So today's topic is a fun one, interesting one. This is a phrase a lot of people say, right? Yeah. This one actually annoys me with toddlers, and then you probably even get it right now, having people this age in the home and also out of the home. And that's that phrase where people say, "Oh, like if some, it's usually they're almost trying to pull you down." Usually, if like when something going something's going good, yes. Then they usually say, "Oh, just wait until they're teenagers, right?" Or that's just right. wait until they're this. Uh, mm-hmm. And first of all, don't ever say that. Don't be that person that says that in public. That's just like, <laughs> why, why say that? Uh, and second of all, this comes specifically from Alex Kaufman, who uh, mentions that phrase said, yeah. just wait until they're teenagers. She says, I hear this all the time and refuse to accept that struggle as inevitable. Please talk about how this doesn't need to be an inevitable strategy, approach, expectation, et cetera. Now, you guys have walked through this. So yeah. what would you say um, to that real quick of like that, that phrase? Mm-hmm. Of, Did you hear that? How do you make sure you mitigate against that? Because I know for us, when I hear that, it is hard because you don't feel like you have a bunch of ammo in the gun when you're a toddler parent right. of like, well, no, they're not going to be like that, but I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're like, yeah, oh, you, you want to be humble about it. Right. But I feel like there is, there is a, it is a, it's a, it's a really bad narrative that almost self fulfills. That's right. Right. Like if you yeah. do believe that, then that probably was showing when they were actually tweens and toddlers. That's you know, right. there's like this weird narrative of like, oh, yeah. these are the good years. Those won't be stuff right. like that. So how do, how do you guys navigate yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, I could not wait for my kids to become teenagers. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I want my kids. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. I love that stage. Um, the reason that we have such a problem with this, you guys, is that we have designed a culture that sets up kids for failure uh, at their most vulnerable point in their, in their development. And so, um, so this, there is a predictable problem and you do, and sort of Alex, um, is asking for specific strategies. Um, there, there's a couple that are very costly, Alex. But I, I just, I knew that as we were creeping up to these, these ages, it was critical. Okay. So, um, my first strategy that I tell every family is <clears throat> when your kids are 12 to 15 years old, they are super vulnerable. Yeah. And I, like we send our kids out to public school in, you know, the kindergarten to fifth grade. And we have kids going to different schools and different things. Like right now, Kyra's in fifth grade. She's at school. Sydney's in 10th grade. She's at school. I was extremely careful yeah. with our when kids. When you did that. From 12 to 15. That, yeah. Like that middle school age, um, it is so easy to lose your kids. And uh, and it's getting worse with the way that, if you, especially if you go along with getting your kids a phone, getting your kids in social media, putting your kids into a system. Yeah. Um, I know that's super then, yeah, hard. The sports on the pressure, the extracurricular yeah. pressures. But man, it is not a fair fight. Yeah. I, I I just determined like your kids are too vulnerable. There's too many pressures. You have to create a strategy so that when your kids are in that stage, two things happen. One is you keep your kids heart all the way through those ages of 12 to 15. You're constantly meeting yeah. with your kids, hanging out with your kids, and you're crafting a, an environment for them in which they will they will. Uh, everything's sort of bent towards the family and yeah. not towards the peers. If you do those two things, you'll get through that age of 15. And a lot of people are like, no, I want my kids to be missionaries yeah. when they're 12 or 13. Oh, I was just going to talk you know, about that. Send yeah. them out as missionaries yep. when they're 16 or 17, when you got yes. their hearts and when it's a fair fight. But yeah, what were you going to say? That's what that? I was going to say. I was going to say, and the, the tangent of that is that you, there's this weird belief sometimes in Christian culture of like, I want my kids to be a light in the school and all right. that stuff. And that's fine. Like, you know, that's a good desire. Yeah. But you also have to put it in context of what you're doing. You are forming and discipling your child into adulthood yeah. to to be arrows that go out and reap fruit for 50, 60 years. So two yes. years is – you can wait two more years. That's what I'm right. trying to say because yes. of the context of how fruit works, how yes. multiplication works, how discipleship works, right? It's like no no one would say like, oh, I want my kid to go help people and heal people, meaning you know that you want them to be a doctor. Right. Um, but then, you know, they take one biology one-on-one class and then you say, go be a doctor. It's like, right. no, you have to finish school. Yes. You have to literally finish the training program. Yes. There is a training program for parents to kids in regards to discipleship, formation, uh, their hearts, their minds, training, discipleship before you send them out. Now, of course, this doesn't mean sheltering. This doesn't mean being insular. Yeah. This just means that there's a different relationship in that fir- in that phase. And That's we right. usually conflate those phases or run over that phase or leapfrog that phase. Yeah. And it just kills our kid. That's when right. It's like, no, keep that phase the phase like let your kids go be a light maybe it'll be 13 maybe it'll be 16 maybe it'll be 20 depending on your kid's demeanor your home where you live etc but you have to be sensitive to that's what you're doing my job is to train and then deploy that's right and a lot of us deploy way too early 
uh, uh, to be a, and it's a lot of times we're afraid we're going to look like a homeschool family or this family right. or that family, even if we, you know, send our kids to school, but just like that metaphor. And so, yeah, I just think that's a huge one of just like being okay yeah. with a, with calling it a phase. Like I am training that's and right. discipling to deploy later. Yeah. What's really helpful for me in terms of a concept for this is know when your kid is a missionary and when your kid is the mission field. Mm-hmm. And so there are exceptions to this guys. There are some, you know, 13 year olds totally. who are absolutely on fire for Jesus and you send them out and they're amazing missionaries. And if you got one of those and you want to deploy them at 13, that's great. But don't use that narrative uh, uh, to compensate for a child who clearly is struggling yeah. and needs to be around their family, be with their parents, be with their dad during a very vulnerable uh, part of their development. And so if your child is the mission field in their most vulnerable years and you send them out and they become, they switch teams and become obsessed with sort of what's going on and in, in within sort of that peer culture. Yeah. And you lose your kids. And then, of course, if people use this phrase, just wait till they're teenagers. Yeah. Then I get it. Then yeah. the, 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 it's a self fulfilling prophecy at that point. That is absolutely not, not necessary. Um, and so you have to be, be really thoughtful about it, particularly that, that phase. You want to have kids that are strong in the Lord. Uh, that are deeply rooted in their family, and when they're 16, 17, 18, they are ready for uh, for for the mission field. They're ready to go out and really be on mission with your family. But uh, but don't expose your kids or have too high expectations for them during that early phase. Um, guys, one thing we want to keep you keep in mind is that we have um, we have a family teams weekends coming up. Uh, we got three. We've got Waco, Waco in May, Seattle in <laughs> August, yes, Cincinnati in October. Yeah. So if you guys want to just really dive into yes. uh, the first three tools. You won't find anyone there that says, just wait till they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're trying to figure this out. Yep. Um, come join us on one of those. You can find that out at familyteams.com.